good? Yeah. Not good, amen. Yeah.
says two or three dragons and then two dragons. And that's all that matters to him. Because all he wants to do is fellowship. He just wants to fellowship with his sheep, with his thigh, with the ones that want to be with him. And that's all that makes him happy. Not the big crowd.
16 in the 30, 13th verse down to the 19th verse it says here it says when Jesus came into the coast of Syria of Caesarea and Philippi he asked his disciples saying whom do men say that the son of man is and they said some say that thou art John the Baptist some Elias and others Jeremiah's or one of the prophets. Automatically, they said what everyone else was saying. Huh? They were saying, well, I heard here and I heard there. And this is what they say about you. And that's what, you know, over here is what they say about you. Huh? But then Jesus says this. He says, he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Saying to his disciples, but who do you say that I am? Not by what just they say, but who do you say? And Simon Peter answered and said something, something amazing, something big, something beyond things. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So many times we look at the name of Jesus as Jesus Christ as a first and last name, huh? And it's just like Sean Wallace or, or whatever. They just look at it as a first and last name. It's not that way. Jesus is his name, but he is the Christ is who he is. Huh? And, then, and here Simon Peter says this, says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That means something beyond anything else. He is the Christ, the Emmanuel, God with us, the only one. Huh? It's more important, important name more than just even Jesus. Hmm? The Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Huh? Are we serving Christ today because of what somebody else told us? Are we serving Christ because, because of hearsay or because supposedly my ancestors have done it, my, the, my parents have done it, everyone around me has done it, or do I do it because of... The Father has revealed himself unto me. Huh? Huh? And with that, he says, I and I say unto thee that thou art Peter on this and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So many times I've heard this one in ministry is saying that Peter was that rock. No, he's not saying Peter's the rock. He's saying upon this profound statement. Is what he's building a rock upon. That Christ, Jesus, is the Christ, yes. the Son of the living God. To recognizing that he is Christ and not as anything else. And I will give unto thee the, king, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Because a profound thing happened here, he got some keys. 
huh? He got some real things. He got some power. He got some. He got some royalty, is what it is, huh? Something beyond anything that this world could ever fathom. Here in John 6, in the 66th verse and through the 69th verse, there was another time that something happened here. It says, now, now I'm going to give a backstory here. There was many, many people begin to follow Jesus, and they were considered as disciples. That means followers. huh? Many, many begin to follow him. There would be several people who would begin to follow him. But here in this passage right here says this in the 66th verse. It says, from the time for that time, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. Huh? In that time, many walked, turned back, and didn't walk with him anymore. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Hmm? Will ye also go away from me? Huh? These other ones did. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Huh? Where are we going to go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Hmm? And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Huh? With, with all assurance. No doubt whatsoever. All assurance inside with all being. Knowing that he's the Christ. Huh? We're living in a day and time today that is going to test our faith. How much of God do we really know? How much of the Christ do we really know? They're going to test us and, and try us and, and put up temptation before us and try to get us to deny our true Christ and who he is. And follow some other kind of doctrine or some even some other Christ and besides the Christ. Of the Son of the Living God, we're living in a day and time that's causing deceiving powers, trying to cause deception, trying to trying to put blinders on people's eyes into believing in a false gospel that's not even real and true. But the only way we're going to know is we got to know the Christ. We have to know who Jesus Christ is and know assuringly in our own hearts who He truly is. We need to know him beyond his occupation. Huh? So many times we know him because of his occupation. Well, I know him because he's my savior. I know him because he's my healer, my father, my deliverer, the one that sets me free. Well, those are things that he does. That's his occupation. That's what he does. So many times is all we know of him is what he's done and what he's done for us. What if he's never done anything at all? What if he's never done anything for us? Will we still know that he's the Christ? Will we still recognize him as the son of the living God? He doesn't have to do these things for us. He loves to do them because he loves us. Promise says that he will do for us. But I don't serve him because of what he does for me. I serve him because of who he is. Uh, because he's the Christ, the son of the living God. He's the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. Huh? He's the, he's, he's everything. He's God. And whether I believe in him or not, it does not change the fact at all that he's God. Huh? So many times we think we know certain things just because of their occupation. Huh? So many times we think we know him. I'm sorry, I, I was trying to remember your name. I know of this brother here because... He goes around and, and does work for Brother McAllister now and then. Dave. <laughs> yeah. But he does work for him. And I know him because of his occupation and things that he does. But do I really know him? No. We never sat down and actually hung out, have we? I don't know your ins and outs. I don't know what his favorite color is. I don't I don't know what his favorite if he likes ball games or not. I don't know him if he likes fishing or not. How much of the man do I really know? But I know him by his occupation. He's that guy that goes out and picks up trash for people and cleans up the ditches when I need to and does this and does that. Huh? The only way I'm going to know somebody, i got to spend time with them. i got to spend every waking moment with them. I need to spend some time and closeness with them. Huh? i got to spend time with them to find out exactly who that person is. Hmm? Beyond what they do. Huh?
here in Luke 1. And it was talking about Mary here. Luke chapter 1, 34 through 35, it says, Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. Huh? Has anybody ever paid close attention to these phrases? Mary, what are you talking about? You know no man. You know Joseph. Huh? She knew Joseph, right? She knew a man. But she didn't know a man. See? She, she didn't get intimate with the man. She don't know him that way. She hasn't moved in with him yet. Huh? Don't know how hot his coffee is to be in the morning. Huh? Haven't got real close to him yet. Huh? So she just said the statement, How can see I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Notice that the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. There was one that she did know, though. And that was God. She spent time with God. She knew who God was. And she knew if the angel came unto her and made a profound statement to her, she was going to believe it. She took him for exactly what the angel said to his word. Said that in Holy Ghost, this Holy Ghost, they, they, they haven't heard about this Holy Ghost yet. Who's this Holy Ghost they're talking about now? I know about the burning bush. I hear about the story all the time. And by cloud by day and, and, and the fire at night that led the Israelites. I know about this. But what's this Holy Ghost she's talking about? He, this angel's talking about that's going to land on me. Can you imagine what was going through her head? But she just believed him. She just believed the angel and exactly what the angel said. But she knew the angel was from God. But she knew no man. But she knew who God was. See the difference? Huh? Here in John 4, 19 through 24, talks about another woman here in the Bible. And it says, in the 19th verse here, it says, The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Talking about the Samaritan woman. O fa uh, our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Well, she says she knows of. But notice Jesus says this to her. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at ye at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. He said to her, You worship, but you don't know what you worship. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Huh? You worship, you don't even know what you're worshiping. You're only doing it because of what you've been told. Well, you've been told all your life what you should worship and how you should worship and how you should present yourself and how you should read the Bible and how you should do this and how you should do that. And we just listen on hearsay, on hearsay, and on hearsay. And how much of them do we really know? Do we really know him for our own selves and what we should do and how we should read and how we should worship and how we should serve the Lord Jesus Christ? 23 says, But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Huh? In spirit and in truth. Deeper than just emotion, just deeper than just ritual, deeper than just what I've been commanded to do. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. See? I know there's something else here. Luke 4, 33 through 37. 
Now this is something that is crazy to me. 33, it says, And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice. Huh? In the synagogue there, there was an unclean spirit, unclean devil, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art, the Holy One of God. Huh? The devil himself know who Jesus is. And that's not my words, that was God's words. Even the devil himself knows who Jesus is. They even called him for who he was. The Holy One of God. Hmm? The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Huh? And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the fame of him went out into every place of the country round about. Who's this man? Who's this individual that has such power to command an unclean spirit? They knew who he was. Uh oh, they got a little scary there. If the devil knows who he is, then I should know who he is, right? Even the devil himself knows who Jesus truly is. Here in Matthew 7, 13 through 27, and I'm going to be closing with this. Enter ye in the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and few there be that find it. Very few will know who truly Jesus is. Hmm? Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but every corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth uh, evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. Now notice this here in verse 20. Wherefore, for th by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. In thy name done many marvelous works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, devils, ye that work iniquity. How is that possible? They knew his name, but that's as far as they knew. Huh? They knew his name, but that's as much as he known. There's also another passage of scripture in the Bible, too, that the disciples got worked up because there were sons on the other end of the city who was over there in the name of Jesus and doing miracles and doing healings and doing things. And the disciples got worked up and went to Jesus and said, there's others over here that are in your name doing these things. And Jesus said, leave them alone. Let them be. Let them do their thing. But they don't know you, Lord. They don't know you like I know you. How is it possible they're doing it? Because of my name. 
because of his name. God will use his name always. But only the true worshipers know him for who he truly is beyond his name. The name of Jesus is being proclaimed loudly across our nation and around our world and mentioned to Jesus numerous of times. It's being mentioned over and over and over and over again. But my only great concern is how much of Jesus do they really know? Do they just know the name of Jesus or do they really know who Jesus is? And it makes it fearful for me, not as in a, not in a, I'm not talking about a fearful thing as, as Satan. I'm talking about a reverence and fear that people will be deceived by the name mm -hmm. and not by who he truly is, not knowing who he is. They're going to be deceived and believing in a false gospel. The Antichrist system, the Antichrist movement, believing in a Christ that's not even true Christ. But the only way we're going to know is if we truly know him. To finish this year out, it says in the 24th verse, it says, Therefore, Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Huh? So knowing and having the foundation, and notice the foundation again, that Jesus told Peter that upon this rock I will build my church, the revelation of the Christ, the Son of the living God. Not a formality, not a form of it, not a form of godliness denying the power thereof, but a true move, power of God, knowing deeply within ourselves who Christ really is. We have to know him, church. We have to know him today because we're ending up in a time frame that's going to question us of how much of Jesus do we really, absolutely know. Has anybody seen those uh, cra that crazy show? People want to call it crazy. Doomsday Preppers. Has anybody heard of that nonsense or something? It used to be a show. Me and my wife, we like to watch it. But uh, I remember that. Some of the, <laughs> they, people just, they're prepping for doomsday. They're packing up stuff and everything, and, which there's nothing wrong to get prepared for certain scenarios. For You know, you never know. We might have an ice storm. A big storm might come through a tornado. There's nothing wrong with being prepared and ready for certain things. But we're entering a doomsday in the spirit that we need to prepare ourselves for a doomsday in the spirit. Because it's fixing to be a storm. And it's going to be great. There's going to be a famine. The Bible says there'll be a famine in the land where they will want to hear from the things of God and can't. They'll want to hear, but they can't because mm -hmm. there's nothing to hear. Because how can they hear without a preacher? How can they hear without a preacher means a person, a testimony? How can they hear? Mm -hmm. So we have to be prepared and ready for a time frame. I'm not, I'm not saying this to try to put fear. I'm just saying one because it's time. It's warning time. And if anybody can see it, it's out there. Everywhere. I mean, for goodness sake, you can't even turn on the news anymore without some kind of nonsense. Huh? And you can't even believe everything it says. <laughs> God's good. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.
show you. He probably was told him that they were not. But anyway, he got killed over here on Samuel Hill. He was married to Dean Woodman's daughter, our granddaughter. She's going through a real hard time. I talked to her down at Green Oaks Park, and the girl was about to die. You know, I've known this girl since she was in that And it took my heart. She's not I don't know if God's wanting me to talk to this girl about the witness of Jesus or somebody. I'd rather my wife talk to this girl or somebody. I do know, you know. But God's been on my mind. Okay. You know. Used to, I wouldn't minister. You know, I wouldn't even say her name out in church. After what happened to me last night, I was put a burden on my life to see the Holy Spirit. And, uh, God brought me back to see the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Her name is Rob. Touches one of them, Lord. And Lord, you, you know the need, Lord. You know the heartbreaks, the, the difficulties, the healings, Lord, that needs to be taking place, God. And we ask, Lord, right now, Lord, to touch each individual need right now, God. Meet, Lord. We ask, Lord, to touch family members, Lord. Save souls, Father God. Save family souls, Lord. And friends and community, Lord. We ask, Lord, to bring them into the house of God. Bring them into this house, Lord. Save souls, Father God. And Lord, I ask you, Lord, to touch this church, Father God. We ask you, Lord, to just compel more of you to come into them, Lord, and give, just, just give you the peace and the, and the, the mercy and the grace and, the, and the, uh, just the wonderful power of you, Lord, to just enter in, Lord, of your loving power, Lord. And we give you all the honor. We give you all the praise, Lord. And we glorify you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to just compel us closer to you, Lord God. In Jesus' name.